So this is my initial review of the SV-105 Max of Tough Casey Grant. Now, my first impressions on the building quality is in fact that it's actually quite a nice scope. Now, I have used scopes that are similar size to this that are of other brands, and a lot of them tend to have a lot of plastic parts on them. And this guy, uh, I've kind of looked them over pretty closely and I haven't actually found anything like that. And that is something that I like and definitely can appreciate. Now, there are actually three different configurations that you can purchase this scope and you can buy it just as the naked scope itself, which is how I got it. Or you can actually get it set up for video work or planetary work. You know, it'll actually come with a camera and, you know, kind of all the little accessories you need basically to get rolling with, you know, planetary or lunar astrophotography. And then another category that you can do or at least configuration that you can purchase is one that's set up for visual. So it'll come with a right angle prism and also a couple eyepieces and a finder scope. Now this guy actually has two different ways to connect a finder scope to it. So regardless of what type of finder scope shoe that you have, you'll be kind of pretty much set, you know, if you already have something like that. As I said in my unboxing video, this guy comes with a little blow gun for removing dust on this front element, which really is going to come in handy because one night I tried to just use my breath to blow on it and I got spit all over the thing. I got to clean it now. <laughs> so yeah, use the blower that they supply. <laughs> now, if you have a typical Fairpoint type Batonoff mask, these do hook quite nicely on the outside edge of them. I actually went and 3D printed one that will kind of like fit right over it. And I intend to, I might even print a third one of these, one that will actually go over this guy. And what this is, is actually a dew shield that I made. And this is one that I found on, I think Thingiverse. I will link to both of these 3D prints that so you can go and do it yourself. And it was a little bit loose on there. So what I did is I put a little bit of Velcro on one side just to kind of give it a little bit of tension. And now it kind of fits on there super snug and everything. And that does an excellent job of keeping dew off of it. Now, some more information about the optics. I will tell you right now, okay, that the optics have a very flat field. So you don't need to buy any field flattener in order to use this with a camera, all right? Another thing that I will tell you is focusing. So focusing is actually a little bit tricky with this guy. Because it's an F14 scope, it kind of feels like it's very easy to focus because it's very easy to find. However, that's because the depth of field of the focus is so deep. And finding true exact focus is really something you should do with a Batnop mask, regardless of whether or not you're doing astrophotography with this thing or if you're doing this visually. So if you're doing this visually, find a good bright star, focus on it using the focusing mask, and then kind of pan around and start hitting whatever images, images you want to get or whatever kinds of targets you want to see. That's my advice, all right? And, and that, of course, is because of, you know, the, the mushiness, I should say, of the focus. That doesn't have anything to do with the focuser itself. And actually, I want to compliment, once again, <laughs> SV Boney does an excellent job assembling their scopes. The focuser in this guy, I don't feel any backlash in it whatsoever. It's all metal, which is really nice. And yeah, it seems to be a pretty solid piece of equipment. There are three adjustment zones in the back, which I think had to do with tuning the mirror and so forth. I'm not really kind of familiar with that kind of stuff with a Maxitov case of grand, so I'm not going to fidget to with it yet, just yet. Maybe a little bit further on in, in my final review, I will do that. Now, with thermal stability with this guy, being all metal actually kind of helps it cool down a little bit faster because, you know, aluminum radiates heat a lot faster than plastic does, which, which is kind of something I've found with an issue with other scopes. That being said though, still, you do need to give this guy a little bit more time to cool down. Uh, and also, if you're doing imaging, like especially solar imaging, solar imaging with these is just fine. However, you gotta be careful with heat on this thing because, you know, let's say if you leave this thing out in the sun and it's not pointed right at the sun, well, what can happen is it can kind of get the thing hot and cause a lot of currents on the inside of the scope and so forth. And, and this all has to do with the fact that it's mostly a sealed, uh, package, you know, there aren't really any breathing holes on this optical tube, you know, which has its pros and cons, by the way. 
Uh, I like the fact that it's very well sealed because it means that dust getting inside of it is almost something you basically don't have to worry about at all. So this right here is one of the plugs that goes into the back that kind of covers up the adjustment screws for the main mirror. Now, so far this mirror feels pretty tight. I don't feel any tilt in it whatsoever when I'm kind of slewing at different parts of the sky. And, and then the last thing I'm gonna leave you with here is the image circle size. So this thing doesn't have a very large image circle. So I would stay away with it if you're gonna go after this thing with an APS-C size sensor. I would stick with micro four thirds or one inch or smaller than that even. And, and that is simply, a, that's just actually a characteristic of scope, of a scope this size, okay? This isn't a big scope, it's only 105 millimeter aperture. And now there are some bigger Maxitov Casagrands out there, uh, like there are some 150s and 180s, but they're very expensive. The price on these things climbs really fast when you start getting the bigger apertures. This is not an official review. In an official review, which I will do later, I will actually show you videos and footage taken through the actual scope.